Of 2014. Ever. No, it's not ever. <laughs> Shut up. I'm joined in the studio by Peter Jones, writer of three and a half self help books. I don't know why you say that. On subjects of happiness, yep. weight control, and dating. And his latest book, The Good Guy's Guide to Getting the Girl, is a fiction, and that is out now. I've got a copy of it. I'm reading through it at the moment. I've also got another one of your books on the go. And, and I'm reading Steve Brookstein's book. And I'm reading Gone Girl. I've got quite a few on the go at the moment. We can all get the stories get mixed, mixed up. up yeah. <laughs> but it's sometimes like, wasn't there a murder yeah. in the weight loss story? Uh, so, Peter, um, thank you for coming in today. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you too. We've, uh, we, you brought in some Fox's biscuits and you biscuits. Yeah, we, I don't know whether we're going to get to the biscuits. I might do, actually. I'm pretty hungry. Um, and you brought, me in a lovely, you brought me in a lovely present as well, which I'm going to open at home. Which I would, Is it chocolate? It's all excited. He went, no, so I know it's a book. Um, but I still like books because I do. <laughs> <laughs> is it chocolate? No. I was like, oh. um, and you've been. Uh, you've, you've sampled one of my Belgian buns as well. That was, yeah. You've delicious. nibbled it. I have. Oh, you, you've, been, you've eaten it. yours it's and I've gone. nibbled around mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuffed now. That's me for the rest of the day. It's the icing, you see. I like the I like icing. I don't, it's the cherry on the top. <laughs> Isn't it always? Mm. Um, the um, I had a stolen cake the other day, which I thought a was... stolen nice. cake? Stolen. Oh, stolen. Which has stolen. got... I didn't realise it had marzipan in it and right. I literally nearly threw up. Do you not like marzipan? No, not really. I, I don't love on, marzipan. Wait, wait, Wedding cake's always got it and it's like, no... I, I love like it. it. I love my. It's the best bit. Oh, no, most filial. I don't know what, what is it. Is it is it almonds? Uh, yes. But I like almonds. Right. So I don't understand what happened. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. There we go. Uh, now this is the theme mystery. <laughs> Sorry, that was a long introduction. <laughs> you did, you played the whole tune. I have, yeah. But but I must say that we um, we were the first people probably yeah. to actually play that yep. uh, song back in well when you first started on yep. the show and that was your theme tune then. Yep. And as a result, we sent it to number <laughs> one. <laughs> we certainly did. Yep. Uh, now you write um, loads loads of books, but just to give a little bit background on yourself before mm. we start on today's uh, chosen subjects um tell us tell us everybody why you got into writing how long you've been writing for and the t- and your titles of your books uh, uh, well right why i got into writing was just because i used to i just really used to love it enjoy it and um i it was a hobby and i used to do that in my 20s and mm. uh used to go to a writing class here in brentwood yeah um run by adele Ramette. Um, and uh, yeah, I used to write short stories, science fiction short stories, that <gasps> sort of thing. Oh, I want to read some of those. Uh, Have you published they're rubbish. them? <laughs> oh no, I love sci. I'm a sci-fi. Get- I'd love Are to you? read the. Yeah, I never thought of you as a. Oh, trekkie. I love. Are yeah, you? I do. I love. I... Yeah, sci-fi is my thing. Uh-huh. I say it all the time. You don't even listen to my show, do you? How rude. Well, you see, in South End, it's quite difficult to get. Okay, well, we'll stand out on the roof with an in- antenna. Yeah, antenna? Okay. yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm not really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting the side down. Or anyway, listen online, get on with it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I stopped writing in uh, you know by the time I got to my thirties, and then I met my wife Kay, and um, she sort of uh, she was sorting through some files and some papers, and she found my short stories, and she uh, she read them, and she, and um, then she found a silly poem that I'd written, mm. and uh, she roared with laughter and said, that, "What?" She said, "I like your short stories." There, you know, there was because she liked science fiction as well, yeah. And they're okay, but she said this poem, this funny poem, is is really good, and um, it's got lots of personality. It's got your humour and that sort of stuff. And what you ought to do is combine the two things together. And so she started me on the writing thing again. So yep. I, that's when I started, and that was like about ten years ago. And that's when I started working on the novel, which has only just come out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I always get this wrong, The Good Guy's the good Guide. The Good Guy's Guide to Getting the Girl. That is hard to say, isn't it? Did you realise that when you actually gave the title? Uh, or is it just me being a bit uh, stupid? I don't, I don't think it's... T- I don't think it's hard to say. You just need ten years' practice. Good, yeah. good, well, yeah. The Good Guy's Guide to Getting the Girl. See, rolls off your tongue. And how are sales of that book doing? Because it's been out... That's uh, right. Okay, it, what, it, it went... Uh, when it came out, it went straight <coughs> into the top 20 <gasps> of... Uh, well, it's top 10. It was at number nine of uh, women's humorous... Um, fiction, yeah, which was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was up there with the likes of Helen Fielding, and mm. you know, and uh, it was I was astonished. And it went up there, and it was there for about a week and a bit, and then it sort of started to sort of like you know settle down the cycles, mm. and it's sort of like it's ticking over, yep. ticking over nicely. But I set myself a goal to to get that book back into the t- into the top twenty, yeah, uh, by December, and I have completely failed. But <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought you could say the good news is I've completely vanished. No, no, but that, but that is the point with goals. Is that you, mm. you should, when you set yourself goals, you should really try and set them so they're slightly out of reach, yeah. so that you push yourself. And uh, this year has been about all about setting goals, and yeah. I've been working very hard. In, and as well as, I mean, as well as the good guys guide to getting the girl. Obviously, I wrote uh, two more self-help books this year. There yep. was uh, How to Start Dating and Stop Waiting. Which is a brilliant book. I've read that. Have you? Yes. Really? Oh, yes. there you go. And that's, I mean, that's like the biggest book I've written so far. That's a massive That's title. at least A4 size. <laughs> <laughs> A5, yeah. Oh, sorry, you're talking about, oh, sorry, you're talking about the pages. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, that, that, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that came out February the 14th. Just, I've just got a vision in my head of like a book that's like just yeah. so you can't actually open the page. I'm sorry, <laughs> stupid. Okay. And then shortly on the, uh, the back of that, um, around about exactly the same time, I wrote the companion guide to that book called From Invisible to Irresistible. Yes. Which is my shortest book. That's a short, quirky, yep. and uh, in fact, of all my self-help books, I think that's my favourite one. I like it. I've read that as well. Yeah. So I've got one by my bed. Uh, so it used to have a signed picture of you as well there, but that's yeah. that's gone. Oh, you got rid of that? No, it, I don't know what happened. I think I hoovered it. <laughs> <laughs> by the Hoover. Sorry. So three books came out this year, and uh, when you're a, when you're an author, when you're full time author, do people say to me, you know, do you prefer being called writer or an author? And I used to sort of think author sounded better, mm. but in actual fact, the reason why I prefer being called author is because writing is just a really small part of the author gig. Yeah, there's an awful lot more to it. You have to do a lot of publicity and plugging and promotion. So an awful lot of this year has gone into just plugging the books and doing interviews and tweeting and Facebook and doing talks at yeah. women's institutes and those sort of things. And um, it's been a lot of hard work. Mm. And uh, I'm not complaining about um, being an author. I love being an author, okay? It's my dream job. But it is, you know, don't kid yourself. It's not particularly well paid and it is, it is quite a lot of hard yeah. work. And I got yeah. to the end of this year, around about October-ish, and I, I realised that, you know, I wasn't feeling particularly happy yeah. anymore. Um, I was, you know, beginning to feel a bit jaded, and and um, and I realised that what I'd done over the past year is put an awful lot of energy into creating the life I want, and not a lot of energy into enjoying the life that I actually have. And this yeah. is a mistake which um, um, people often make when they come up on workshops that I run, my mm. happiness workshops. You find that you know that sometimes you meet people who've done this very thing. Yeah. You know, an awful lot of time spending trying to build that dream life, you know, and you can mm. you can spend your life doing that. You yeah. can, you know, me and Kate did that. We spent an awful lot of time just working towards goals, trying to get ourselves to a point where, we're, you know, where we we're, we're, were making a living without having to be there to yeah. do it, you know. And, t- and as you know, time ran out for Kate. Mm. You know, I lost her uh, six years ago now. Yeah. And... Um, and I wish we'd spent a lot more time sort of uh, just trying to, uh, just enjoying ourselves. Yeah. And so this year I thought, I'm doing it again. I'm blooming doing it again. So the last... But at least you got to the point, we went, hold on a minute, I'm doing it again, stop. You stop. Didn't, you didn't carry on. Yeah, exactly. And I think <clears throat> you, you have to do that. You have to yeah. say, uh, when, when you get, if your listeners, if anybody out there has got to a point in their life where they're thinking, I am not particularly happy. I'm not talking depressed necessarily yeah. or you're miserable or anything like that. Just a bit like... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit meh. You just did it over my cake. Sorry about Sorry. that. Sorry. <laughs> you know, if you get to that point, then you have to, th- at that point, you have to stop and think, I need to change this. I need to, uh, you know, I need to do something about it. Okay. If you're not happy, change something. If you're happy, leave things as they are. It's, yeah. Life isn't really that tricky. So uh, the first thing I did was um, I went back to th- my basic principles of ha- happiness, which is Figure out what it is that makes you smile. Do more of those things. So I looked at my uh, now list, which is what I call a bucket list, and I had a bit of a shifty round. And one of the things on on the bucket list or now list was see more theatre, because I love theatre. You know, I used to uh, belong to a theatre company um, here in Essex, and, uh, you know, I I used to go to theatre quite a lot, and I really miss it. So in the last few uh, weeks and months, I've been to see about... about nine productions or oh wow nine, yeah, yeah. Also, and the weirdest things ever mm. um i went to see uh, an improvised puppet show at the vaults mm. underneath waterloo station that was interesting so yep. no script no nothing a couple of puppets they made it up so they went along yep 
uh, and uh, well, you could have been out heavy drinking and just turned up and just sort of had some sort of horrible hallucination. There's no theatre there it at all. It well, <laughs> It's a very strange theatre, yeah. I have to say. And uh, I went to Battersea Arts Centre as well and yeah. saw the strangest, strangest thing I've ever seen, which is basically three half-naked people rolling around in mud, throwing bits of food at each other. That was a little bit odd. That was a bit out there. Um, Phoenix of them Christmas party all over again. <laughs> but I've, been, I've seen an awful lot of theatre. Yeah. I went to see 39 Steps as well uh, in, at the Criterion in London. If, mm. you, um, if you want to treat your loved one to a trip to the theatre or something like that in the new year, thoroughly me- recommend it. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a comedy. Mm. That took me a bit by surprise. I thought 39 Steps was like a thriller, a Hitchcock yeah. sort of thriller. But actually it's a comedy and, uh, you know, that was great. And so I've been doing an awful lot of that. Yep. And um, in about two or three days' time or a day after Christmas Day, I'm going to be having a Boxing Day, um, which uh, now everybody knows what Boxing Day is, and this isn't Boxing Day, this is a Boxing Day. Which we are going to go into in a bit more detail okay. after a little break. Okay. And you can explain about Boxing, boxing day. day. But it's not the Boxing Day as you know it, no. this is Peter's Boxing Day. Okay. But it's not just Peter's because he wants you to know about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There we go. Okay. You make you sound like you're some sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Peter's Boxing Day, it's not yours. Yeah, but we were talking take, yeah, about it here. Yeah, it's copyrighted. <laughs> Lovely. I'm glad I did cover up the cake when you made that horrible noise earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm really that. funny with that. You know what? I'm, I'm the sort of person, <laughs> if we were having something to eat, and we did do this thing, we went to Catherine's uh, food. Uh, uh, the Supper Club. Supper Club, which that was fantastic. Was uh, Mustard Seed Chef. Yeah. You were there, and I, was, I started yeah. singing disco, yeah. and you ran out. I did. Um, but we were eating. Um, yeah. That woman had her hand on your leg. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Oh, she was very she had a few drinks. She had. She was a very nice lady. She was a lovely lady, but hand and leg, and I was laughing. But I'm very. I couldn't. <laughs> if somebody said to me, taste this off of, off of their fork. Yeah. I can't do that. Did I do that? No, you didn't. I'm just saying. Oh, it's just just phlegm or stuff that you might have breathed onto my food. <laughs> or if somebody said, oh, have a bit of this off my fork, I'd be like, no. Okay. No, just so top you know. Tip. Top tip. Well, if the whole of Brentwood now knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like phlegm. There we go. Yeah. Uh, right, shall we? <laughs> I'll do some travel now. Okay. Phoenix FM. I do apologise, yes. It's free electric blanket testing yeah. on Wednesday the 21st between 10 and 2. And basically, if you're a lot of elderly people... Not that's even a great idea. Because they are one of those things... They can be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a I really great idea. I feel very warm. <laughs> that's because you're yeah, on fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Cheerful. There we go. Yeah, but you can have it tested. It. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, now, we're joined in the studio by author... Yeah. Peter Jones. Hey. Um, writer of happiness books, weight loss books, dating books, and the good guy's guide to getting the girl. Which isn't self-help and is a novel. <laughs> a work of fiction. I, I was going to finish that. I know, I That's know. That's a good breath. I, that, I really didn't think that through. I really should. <laughs> you know, having written three self-help books, three and a half self-help books, and then you bring out a novel and you call it something that sounds like self-help. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it yeah. is a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, but, it is, you know. yeah. but never mind. Never Doesn't mind. Matter. Done now. Um, it's done, and it's out there to buy. Yeah. Don't forget, go on to Amazon. Yeah. You can get it on Amazon, on your website, all the W's, yeah. Peter Jones, Ulf. Uh, Peter Jones, author. Dot com. Yeah, there we go. There uh, you go. It's Peter Jones, Ulf, on... Uh, Peter Jones, author on Twitter, because... I thought it was, uh, thought it was Ulf. Yeah, it's Peter Jones, Ulf, on Twitter, Twitter. Yeah. because there aren't enough letters on Twitter. Oh, right. That's why. Oh, right. Yeah, otherwise it would have been Peter... J- if it's Instagram, it's Peter Jones author. Oh. Have you got a load of pictures then I can look at? Yeah. Yeah, but there'll be a picture blankets. of you later on. <laughs> with your Chelsea buns. <laughs> they're a little bit burnt and a bit shriveled up, but, you know, I think they're a bit old. That's why mm. my Chelsea buns are not looking the best. Can I ask you a question? Yes, what, go ahead. So what, what happens in your household on Boxing Day? Uh, on Boxing Day, I should be sat there on my own. Yeah. It's a cue the sad music. <laughs> And then I will be having a little whatever's left over from yeah. the Christmas day with uh, friends, and right. then I will be doing a gig. So it a will gig be on Boxing on Day. On Boxing Day evening, cool. yeah. So, but I will be kind of quite, uh, you know, right, sort of flouncing so, around. So you're going to chill out, and then the gig yeah. in the evening that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, Boxing Day in our household used to be a rerun of Christmas Day. Although there was another roast turkey, mm. uh, more Christmas pudding. Um, there was, you know, uh, even another round of uh, presents when we were very young. Mm. Yeah, I know. Mm. And uh, basically it was, and, and that's how it's always been in my family. It's always yeah. been a rerun of Christmas Day until my wife Kate came along. And she said, um, you know, no, when we get to Boxing Day, you know, we've done it, we've, we've done it, all the shopping, we've done, the, you know, we've gone around to all the friends and the family, we've, you know, we need a break now, we need time off. We'll get, Boxing Day is our day. And so mm. it became our day. And we used to get up like, and uh, open a bottle of champagne and uh, look at our gifts from the day before and then play silly board games and go for a walk. And, and, uh, and, and it was, quite frankly, a lovely day. The first Boxing Day that Kate and I spent together, I ended up proposing to her. 
Oh. I know. That gives you some idea how good Boxing Day made me feel about life. And yeah. there hasn't been a Boxing Day since that hasn't given me that similar inner glow, that similar beeb for life. And yep. I'm, I talk with some, um, you know, I can say that hand on heart because I've uh, had Boxing Day at least 800 times yeah. since then. Because uh, that first year after Kate uh, passed away, my mother, who was a little bit concerned for me over the Christmas season, said, would you like to come over to our place for Boxing Day? You know, mm. and have an old-fashioned we run a Christmas Day Boxing Day yeah. as we used to and I said you know what I think I'd rather do what Kate and I used to do mm. so I got up late and I opened a bottle of champagne and I looked at my gifts from the day before and then I went for a little walk down the old Lee and I looked mm. out at the boats resting in the mud and, and I went home and I wrote down some thoughts and did some planning and by the end of the day I felt like I'd had a week's holiday and all I'd done was get up that morning and see how the day unfolded and yeah. just do whatever I felt like doing mm. whatever the opportunity opportunity present whatever opportunities presented themselves and i ended up at the end of that day thinking isn't it a shame that boxing day is only once a year yeah i could do with a boxing day once a month mm. at which point i thought to myself well why can't i yeah what's to stop myself having the same sort of structure or lack of structure on any other day of the year and answer nothing so ever since that day, I've had Boxing Day once a month. It's not always on the 26th. You yeah. know, I sometimes I move it around. But I do have a Boxing Day on average once a month. Mm. And there have been, uh, you know, really good Boxing Days when I achieved that holiday feeling by the end of the day. And, you know, less good Boxing Days when I didn't quite f- uh, f- have that holiday feeling. But I've never been unsuccessful Boxing Days, days when I felt somehow more stressed at the end of the day yeah. than the beginning. And it, it's a day that really works for me. And I think as you get older, because often I do this talk, and, uh, I do my talks, and, I, and, you know, if there's anybody under the age of 30 there, they look at me and say, well, haven't you just in- reinvented Saturday? Yeah. But, you know, you know, it's like as you get older, and especially when you've got responsibilities and children and family and all that sort of stuff, sat- yeah. Saturday becomes a day when you do chores and you go to the shops and, yeah. you know, and, and that, that malarkey. Sunday, it's often a rerun of Saturday. Yeah. Before you know it, all of your time is spent planned and doing other things and there is no time left for you. Yeah. And so Boxing Day is the antidote to that. Boxing Day is a day when you've you've carved out one day in the diary, you put it in your diary and you say, that day I've got no plans and I'm just going to get up and see how the day unfolds and do whatever I feel like doing. Mm. So there you go. It's my little and, gift to and, your listeners. And if you've got, you know, so well, I can't have got children, but you can always ask somebody to look after your children. Yes. And you can, you normally have somebody that you can say, yeah. actually, can they stay at a friend's house on Saturday night? Yeah. So, or my mother can come over and take them for a few hours so I can have that, even if it's not a full day. Well, I'm glad you, you said know. that because after, because I put <laughs> Boxing Day, Boxing Day is the first idea that's in um, How to Do Everything and Be Happy. Mm. And um, after the first edition of How to Do Everything and Be Happy came out, I had like um, readers writing to me, and most of them were mums and they said i love your book uh but boxing day just doesn't work if you're a mum mm. because you know you've got kids and family and and the like and um so i was like blimey what do i do about this and so i i contacted um the author Ker- keris stanton who writes uh, for mums net and uh, for the guardian i think and she's got two young children lovely boys one of them's got special needs and um she, i thought if anybody if because she's a big fan of how to do everything and be happy i yeah. thought if anybody knows and i make boxing day work if you're a busy mum then it will be her and uh, she came back to me and said uh she said she didn't really have any sort of like special advice any sort of like extra special tips for a mother other than if you are a busy mum with a busy life then my goodness you need a boxing day more than anybody else and you should make an extra special effort to make it happen and so um i invented a couple of rules and ideas and things to help people uh uh, get Boxing Day into their life and one of them was exactly what you said preparation yeah. you need to prepare in advance as when you're going to have the Boxing Day and you have to arrange for your husband to take the kids out yeah. make sure that everybody's got you know knows what they're doing for breakfast dinner and tea yeah. and you know so basically you clear the decks you can't just get up in the morning stand at the top of the stairs and say to the whole household I'm having a Boxing Day today leave me alone that doesn't yeah. work but you can you know uh, make sure that you know you've got no interruptions or anything like that mm. Another tip is you don't tell people in advance that you're having a Boxing Day. Yeah. Because uh, because you'll always get somebody who will remember that you're not... <laughs> I want to get involved and you're not yeah. welcome. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and they're sort of like, they'll say, oh, he's not doing anything, and I've got this decorating yeah. to be done, and, you know, they'll phone you up. So you don't tell anybody else. You, no. keep, it, you keep it be quite uh, secret. And afterwards you can say, I had a Boxing Day, and then tell them why you had a Boxing Day and what it's all about. But before you keep it a bit of a secret, you know, it's just between you and me. I think my Boxing Day would be to get up in the morning, I'd probably jump in the car, I'd drive down to a place which is in uh, Worthing, uh, and there's a place called the Sea Lane Cafe, and sometimes, not very often, but I'll get up really, really early on a Sunday, about six o'clock, and I'll drive down and have my breakfast overlooking the sea. Sounds great. Uh, mooch about around there, then go on the little pier and have a go on all the little games with you've got some Sounds strange great. people uh, walking around, and then I just have a little mooch around and just sort of sit and look at the sea. I love I love being by the sea. It's lovely. You, you live by the sea anyway, don't you? You yeah. do. But I, I love the, the English coast. Can't beat it. You are, though, technically breaking one of the other rules of Boxing Day. Oh. Because you're not supposed to prepare Boxing Day in advance. Well, I didn't know. I wake. I, I, I set the alarm and then I get out and normally I just go, I can't be bothered. <laughs> And then I just sort of just lay, <laughs> land on the sofa, just weeping softly to myself about the things I haven't achieved. <laughs> and then sometimes I go down to the coast. Is that better? Uh, yeah. I mean, do, do you have Boxing Days? Do you ever... I do, I do. I, have I'm you tried lucky. it? Oh, yeah, I, do, I like it. I just like, sometimes I get out and I can go in the but car. But do you find, out. does that, do you find it hard? Do you find if you get up, you're sort of like not really sure what to do? Or you no, I've always got stuff to do. I do, I, I, I like... I mean, fun things. Yeah, fun things. Yeah. yeah, I try. Yeah, I do. I just like. I, I've got a blanket. I don't want to talk about it on here because it's like I sound like some weirdo. But I've got my little blanket. Have you tested it? It's it's like it's, it's silky <laughs> on one side and furry on the other, and it, right. I just sit there wrapped in my blanket. That Sometimes sounds it's just great. Nice. Yeah, that sounds just sort of great. Sitting there rocking backwards and forwards. I think the key to enjoying Boxing Day is to really throw.